Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to carry on working on the whistle. I get that set up in the milling machine that way so I can do all the machining in there. Let's get that set up then. Right, so I've got this set up in the collet and I've got a milling, milling cutter. I'm going to just carefully take that down to meet the centre of that hole in there. That's the first, that hole there to meet that cross hole. So I'll just do that. that bit done. Beautiful. Next thing we've got to do a 1BA hole there and the depth of that is uh, 275 plus, uh, how deep is that? Let me have a look. hundred and sixty six. So from the top edge, that is hundred and sixty six. That's Three, four hundred and thirty-six. Four hundred and thirty-six five. I make that. So I've just changed the colour. Ready for doing that bit there. All right. So I've got drill bit in. I've set my digi to zero once that's hit there. And I did the quick map as well to check. 436 file I've got to go down so let's just get that done there we are right so the next thing we've got to have a slightly bigger cutter to get that shoulder there so I've just changed the cutter Right, looking at this drawing, it doesn't really give you a measurement for this shoulder. So looking at this part, when we turn this main shaft here, that bit's supposed to be quarter of an inch, look. So I'm going to allow, uh, I think I'll do three eighths of an inch. That'll leave that little shoulder there. Cause because that has got to be a clearance fit on there, look. Right, so that's what I'll do. Right, so I've changed the cutter. Now from the top of that down, we have to go 275. So what I'll do is I'll just set zero on, on there, on my digi. And then go down that depth. Right, so I'm just going to go down 275. Nice and gentle. What I've done is swap that for a four flute cutter instead. Right, let's get on. It's got twenty five to go.
Five bag to go. There we are. 275. Beautiful. Right, next thing, I've got to do the top end, which I've got to go 166 far down. And the cutter I'm going to use is this bigger one. I'll just change that. Right, so I've got that cutter in, and I'm going to do this part here which is 166 foul deep so let's get that set to zero that's it and that's what we do Ten pound to go. There we are, hundred and sixty six five. Right, that's that. Lovely. Right, so the next thing, we've got to do this angle. Well, I'm going to use a uh, countersink for that. It says 60 degrees. Does it? Yes, it does. I haven't got a 60 degree countersink. I'm going to do that with a normal 90 degree angle because we're going to machine that part to fit anyway to go into there right so I'll just get a counter sink right on the drawing I'm not going to do that angle yet it says angle to suit the stem so what I'll do now I'll turn this over Drill this hole and then drill that hole there. That I'll do later on after I've made the stem. Nearly forgot myself. I just gotta tap that inside hole 1BA. I'll grind the bottom of that tap off a little bit more so I can get the tap down in the hole a bit further. Right, so I've ground the point off of these blooming taps. I've done several taps in the past. Let's get that in there. That'll go closer to the bottom of the hole. Look. Beautiful, there we are. Right, now I can turn it over. Right, so I've turned this over and I've got that centered. So now I'm going to drill, put a little center drill there and then drill the hole through that shaft. It's about seven sixteenths deep from the top of that so let's just do that right just change the drill Right. 
Right, so that's that hole done. Now I'll make, make that back in the collet and drill that angled hole. Right, so I've got that set up here. I'm just going to drill that little hole to connect up that hole there. That. Right, so I took that out of the call it chocolate. Let's see if I can get closer. Got a bit of wire there, look, just to show you that I drilled it at an angle. There, I pull that out. So now we're back to where we were before I broke that stub off. What I've got to do now is dye that and put a thread on it and then that'll be near on finished. Beautiful. Take that off. Look at that. Right. <clears throat> so there we are. That's the body of the whistle. Pretty much finished. I might file it up a bit more. See if I can get that bit shinier. Next thing we'll make the shaft that goes in the middle, which then screws in there. Right, that's the bit we're going to start making. So what I've got to do, I haven't got any uh, brass that size, so we're going to turn that down to 503 thou first. That'll give me the overall diameter of that part. And then I shall turn that part down for the 2BA thread there. And then I'll turn it around, put it in the chuck that way. Do this end here. Right. So let's make a start. Let's just zoom that in a little bit more.
give that a measure. Right, 503 we want. Right, I've got to go 29 fay. 29 fay. No, Five five to go. Spot on look, 503 fay. That's beautiful. Right, so that's the overall diameter of that. Now what I'll do is I'll turn that shaft down. I need one inch and 160 fay. So let's do that next. So I'll just uh, zero off. Right, that's zero there.
about a measure. 187, 187. What we got there? 194. 194, 187, 55. That's all I've got to do. Go down slowly. Thinking about it, I could have. If I had some 316 brass, I could have put and chopped a piece of that off, drilled a hole, and silver soldered that in. Too late now. I'll just keep measuring it. I don't want to go too small, do I? One eight seven. I got three five. Two and a half five. Don't want to go small. Or else the thread would be too slack. Oh, look at that spot on 1875. Beautiful. I'm happy with that. I'll just get now the what is it? It's a 2BA thread there, look. Right, you see, I've got a bit of tape on there. When you uh, look at the drawing, there's a little bit of paper. Really, don't give you um, any measurements really for that thread. So you've got 275 there, look, in the nut. And then you've got the difference between that and that is 125.5. So I added those two together, which comes to 395 pound. And I've just gone up to just over 400 pound. If we need any more, we can always put some more thread on there later on. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to part that off. I still need to adjust the height of my blooming part and up tool. So I can hold that now in the chuck. Turn that down because we need a quarter, quarter of an inch. Let's turn that down. Oh, that's one BA there. An eighth long. And then we've got a quarter of an inch for that chamfer there, look, with a little 41 foul 
straight on there. So let's get this in the lathe, in the chuck. So you can see I've marked on there, that's a quarter of an inch. So I've got to turn this first part down for the size of the thread, which is 1BA. Once I've got that down, that piece of thread's only got to be one eighth of an inch long. So I should then machine the end down and then we've got to do the angled turning. Measure that 285 we're looking at. Right, so I need 41 file off of there. Getting there. Four file I need. Measure that. 
Ooh. I'm half a face less, but that's fine. Right, that's that. I can now put the thread on there. Just get the die. I won't put the thread on there yet. I'll machine the chamfer on there first, just in case I damage the thread. So I'll set up and do the chamfer now. Right, I've got this set up to do the chamfer. I'm just going to slowly turn the chamfer on there so that the diameter is quarter of an inch next to the stub for the thread. Yeah, still a way to go. Measure that. Yeah, that's good. No, we can go a little bit more.
that do? Right, on the drawer now, I've got to drill that hole, thread that, thread that and drill that hole and then drill that cross hole. What I do now is I'll do the thread on the outside, then drill that to the right depth and then I'll make this in a collet on the milling machine and drill through there. Well, what I'll do, I'll turn the die around because there's a sharper edge on the bottom of there. Look, if you see there, it's easier to start, but you can't get down to any shoulders. So if you turn it around, there's less of a chamfer in there. So I should be able to get closer to the shoulder. turn it around in the holder because I can't see what I'm doing right so I've turned the die around look you can just see the difference that's better Right. Now what I've got to do is bore that hole through there to the right depth and then mount it in a collet on the milling machine and drill through there. Right, I'm just putting a centre drill in there. Now we've got to make that in a collet and drill down through there, right through, so that that hole meets this cross hole. In fact, what I'll do, I'll just make sure that screw's on there. That's lovely. And what I've got to do is put this in a collet and chamfer the inside of that hole to match that. But let's get that hole drilled first. Right, I'm just going to drill this cross slide, this cross hole. I have put a centre drill there, I forgot to move the camera.
Right, it's out the other side. Lovely. Next thing we've got to do, mount that in the collet and then put the chamfer inside that hole. So we'll just do that. Right, I'm just going to put the chamfer in there. And then what we've got to do is offer this up to make sure when that screws in there, the top of that is flush with the top of that. Just do a little bit of it time. And offer it in. Not much, a little bit more. It's nearly there. It's nearly there. A little bit more. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Oh, I've just cleaned the thread out. I'm just going to try that in there. Cool, that's perfect. Women, lovely. I'll just tighten that up. Look at that. Well, I'm chucked as nuts how these two parts went, especially after breaking the stub off of the base. Let's take it out of there and have a look. Right, so there we are. One base, one middle shaft. I saw the time I got it in a minute this weekend. In the next video, hopefully we'll have all of that finished. All these parts done. And the part with the o-ring and the arm and then hopefully we can set that up put some air in it and make it whistle so please subscribe to my channel and join me as i build a two inch scale fowler showman's traction engine see you later lads